babe. She's trying to make a baby. Anthony came over with a super new baby and I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. It's time. <laughs> Typically, you want to do this up to 40 hours in advance. We don't got that kind of time in the master's household. I'm sorry, we just don't got the time. I can't do that. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to take about a half a pound of butter, the nice Irish butter and carry gold, and then I'm going to take a bunch of herbs. I'm taking, what is this called? Rosemary. I'm taking rosemary, I'm taking thyme, and I'm taking sage. They're all fresh. I'm going to chop them up, I'm going to make a compound butter with it, and then we're going to dress the turkey. This is probably the grossest part of the process. So buckle up, baby, and let's get this turkey roasted. All right, here we go. Mmm, mmm, look at these little baby leaves. And save some of these sprigs, just like that. Save these empty sprigs, because you're gonna use them in the turkey stock later on. Oh, but look at this. This is just pure magic. And a quick thing, if you notice, if you go forward, they don't come off, see that? But if you go backwards, they come off. Huh. Little pro tip from Chef Chad, you don't have to pay me for that, sorry. And now we're gonna chop these up with a big old knife. Ah. If you guys can smell these herbs right now, is it herbs or herbs? Some people say it's herbs, but I never say herbology, it's herbology. So I say herbs. Look it up. My buddy James got me this knife from Alaska. I don't know what his purpose for, but look at this. Wow. So we're gonna get these things up. I'm going to start mixing it in that compound butter. All right, so the next thing you want to do is you want to start mashing the, all of those uh, herbs inside the butter. And you can use a mortar and pestle just like this, or you can use a spoon. I like to do this because it makes me feel fancy. But you want to make sure that your butter is room temperature. So how's that looking? Does that look amazing, or is that just me? could just be me, but that's okay because I'm cooking for me. Okay. This is the fun part, said no one ever. I'm gonna go get my turkey, and then we'll, we'll be right back, folks. I'm back with the turkey. <laughs> this is gonna be a little, a little much, but we're gonna work through this together because that's what friends do, right? So I'm gonna remove my turkey and put it on the cutting board. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure my hands are clean. <laughs> so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna, you're gonna wanna lift up the skin right above the breast, and you're gonna start working your hand inside of there. And you wanna loosen that skin away from the muscle tissue. And if you have big hands like me, sometimes you might need to use like a spoon, and that can really kind of help separate it. And you see how that's just working through there? And essentially what we're gonna do is, is we're going to put all the butter inside there. So as the turkey, which is notoriously like a lean bird, it doesn't have much fat on it, the butter will, will keep the turkey moisturized during the baking process. And so that's what we're gonna put all that butter up in here, y'all. Up in here, up in here. Y'all gonna make me baste my turkey. <laughs> Baby, you're weird. And you wanna be careful not to puncture this because then it's, you're also gonna have a bad time. So that's pretty good. Then I'm gonna flip it around. <laughs> flip it around town. Bring it around town. 
SpongeBob reference. Anyone? Okay. Then you want to go through its 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 head. <laughs> well, it's what used to be. Can we just have a moment of silence right now? And then now, with your turkey not facing you, it's it's the opposite way. What you're gonna to want to do is take a ball of this compound butter, say about here, about yay size. Then you're gonna to want to work it into the turkey. So you you put it in there. Then you fold the skin back over and you work it through like this. That way it's not too invasive. <laughs> Same thing, about a ball the size of a meatball. Tuck it into bed, <laughs> then massage and massage. And make sure it stays up there on that breast part because that's the part that'll get dry because it's closest to the heat coming down from the oven. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other two sides I opened. Just a smaller golf ball this time. More like a ping pong ball or a large marble. See how gross that is? This is so disgusting. <gasps> We're gonna take the rest of this compound, compound butter and dress the whole bird. And just basically, imagine just giving the bird a massage and this is your massage oil. Love you guys. Love you, babe. Yeah, right now, I'm gonna go ahead and trust the bird, which if you don't know what that means, I'm gonna make it look nice because we all eat with our eyes. And this is gonna help it not number one cook evenly, but also like yeah, have a nice like plump presentation. So the first thing you're gonna to want to do is take these uh, these these wings and you want to tuck it underneath the breast like that. Imagine sitting cross-legged on the floor. So the first thing you want to do is get some of this butcher's twine, cut off a piece. I'm gonna turn the turkey towards me and I'm gonna start uh, trussing it, but then I'll show you what I'm doing. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to find that neck bone where the, where the turkey's neck would be. I go around once, and I go around twice. I'm going to set the turkey back upright, and then I create a really, high, a really tight tension, and it goes on top of the drumsticks, and you want to tie a, knife, a, a tie a knot underneath this turkey breast. So when you pull it out, you see how that looks. It helps the turkey sit evenly. So I'm going to tie a knot here. Okay, so what I'm going to be stuffing the turkey with is with half of an orange and half of an onion. And these will not be staying in the bird, but they will add a, a lovely, like, fragrant smell to the bird. And of course, there's only room for half of each, so. And it kind of keeps that breast tucked up, which is really nice. And you take the half of the onion, you put that in there as well. And then we will finish trussing the drumsticks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that original knot that's right in there, uh, that's right below the breast. I'm going to go ahead and put my other, uh, my new butcher's twine underneath that and bring it through, because I want those uh, drumsticks to be connected to the original truss. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate these, then I'm gonna take these drumsticks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cross them, like crisscross applesauce, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this butcher's twine very tightly around them, very tightly. And so it should look like this, where these are tight, so this is gonna help it cook evenly. And then what I'm basically gonna do is, is I'm gonna put it back into the refrigerator, and I'm just gonna let it continue to brine until about two hours before we start to cook. Then that way it'll allow it to come up to room temperature, and it'll cook super evenly in the oven. Come on, my friend. Woo! We'll see you in a few hours. Bye. See you later. Bye. For my next trick, I'm making SJ's pumpkin bread. I don't know who SJ is, and I've never made pumpkin bread, but our neighbor has made it uh, for us before, and they are ridiculous, like seriously ridiculous. So I'm gonna give my best attempt at baking. I'm not a baker. Sorry, Kristen Johns. Anyways, I'm gonna get this road on the show. I would wait to see how this one turns out before you try to recreate this one. So let's go. So you're gonna take five medium-sized eggs and put them all up in this uh, mixing bowl. Off to a good start, folks. <laughs> what just happened? There we go. I genuinely don't know. All right, you ready for this? One-hander. <laughs> as close as you can get to one hand. That was awesome. Oh no. Oh no. I gotta go deep diving. <laughs> Thank God I have my sailing degree. I got it. All is good in the world, folks. Who knew that I like cooking so much, but I can't crack an egg? 
All right, Chad, get your game face on. It's time to crack some eggs. Now, I think the key to cracking an egg is having confidence. You just gotta be able to do it and have confidence. There's stuff all over me now. All right, so now that that's in there, I'm gonna add in my pumpkin. I think I'll supposed to have solid pumpkin. I don't think this is very solid. Oh, that looks heavenly. My little baby spatula. Do y'all remember my gag reflex from the Say Your Shot It video? Oh. Six. <coughs> it's in full effect right now. Now we add this oil. This is vegetable oil. It's one and one fourth of a cup. Let's see how high you can go. It's probably not safe. I don't want my wife to make us move back to California. I'm not going to do that. Well, you want to be careful because it's going to make a huge mess and your wife's going to make you move back to California and you don't want that. Now you beat it. Just beat it. So now I'm gonna get this on the stand mixer and ready for the other ingredients. Next up is you need to mix all the other ingredients into a bowl, mix them together, and then you're gonna slowly add them to your stand mixer. Uh, and then you basically let the ingredients get to know each other. And maybe they'll have a good time. You never know. Maybe they'll become friends. Maybe they'll take trips together. Who knows? That's two cups of flour. Is this a cup? Yep, that's a cup. Gosh, who knew? Baking requires so many ingredients. Next up, two cups of sugar. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy. Can I even fit this in there? I don't know what to do here. <laughs> two three ounce packets of vanilla pudding mix. Next up is a half of a teaspoon of salt. A full teaspoon of baking soda. How do you get this out of there? Oh gosh, how do you get this out? Am I supposed to open that thing? That's how you do it, folks. A full teaspoon of baking soda. And I guess you just mix all these together, right? Is that what you do? Wow. All right, and then I think I just slowly walk over to my stand mixer and I mix them together. All right, let me see how this works first off. But wait, is that even tall enough? Oh, shoot. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna spoon this in slowly but surely. Can I make this go lower? Do you know if I can make this thing go lower? Oh, wait, look at this. Oh. I got it. I've never used a sand mixer. All right, sir. Slowly add the other ingredients. I'm awesome. Chef Chad, come into a home near you to bake you pumpkin chocolate with walnut bread, a little powdered sugar on top. Wow, what, what could be sweeter? Is this fast enough? I don't know. Answer below. I wonder how long I'm supposed to let it do this for. I have so many questions. What is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of pumpkins? Wow. So much to think about. Thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of Cooking with Dad, where we talk about more than cooking. We talk about pumpkin. I mean, life. We talk about life. I think now would probably be a good time to let you guys know that I'm an expert in origami. And so, I... <laughs> What do I do with this now? You want to taste it? I didn't put cinnamon in. It was cinnamon. I didn't put cinnamon in here because of you. You have to taste it. God, oh my gosh, it's so heavy. Wow. I think I made too much. I'm going to mix in some chocolates and walnuts. And then I want to keep my hands clean. <laughs> And you fold this in gently, apparently. That's what the, oh wow. Doesn't that look good? I guess if you're gonna get your hands dirty, there could be worse things to get your hands dirty with. Now, I'm gonna just quickly butter down these, uh, these little single loaf pans. You can just take a stick of butter and just get all the nooks and crannies, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Well, butter my biscuits, I mean, banana loaves. 
This is looking awfully good. So now I'm going to try to <laughs> fill these things. Oh yeah, I actually think this is going to be really good. Wait, how high do I fill it up? Because doesn't bread rise? The more you know, Chad. I love that there's some people who actually bake that are watching this and they're like, yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't do that. <laughs> well, guess what? This is my cooking show. Now, I've seen people do this thing. You know what I'm talking about? Or... So I'm finishing with a little uh, walnuts on top and I'm gonna do a little um, chocolate as well. I'm not worried about these burning because I do think that the weight of them will push it a little bit below where the bread will be. And now, I'm putting it in the oven. Good luck, my friends. Oh, it's like sending your children off to school. So yeah, I'm nervous, the pit in my stomach. I've seen a glass of wine and I'll watch like a, a rom-com or something right now. I'll be back later. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I'm just peeling some onions. Thanks for coming by my cooking show. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the turkey in the oven. But before I do that, I'm gonna prepare what's called a mirquoil. Mirquoil? 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 Basically, it's onions, carrots, and celery. You can add some garlic, you can add a little other herbs, but uh, yeah. I'm not crying, you're crying right now. Breathe through your mouth. <laughs> I read that if you um, put your onions in the freezer for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes before you cut them, then you won't uh, get all teary-eyed. Now I'm getting some of the carrots ready. I don't, I won't need all these, just like I won't need all the celery, but I'm gonna try to get them into similar sized pieces. And this is gonna go underneath our turkey. It's gonna add so much sweetness, the carrots are at least. It's gonna add so much flavor to the gravy that we end up making. You wanna make sure it's fairly even because your turkey is gonna be sitting on top of this and you don't want the turkey to be sitting like that or like that or like that. You wanna make sure it's pretty flat and even. Cool. Next thing I'm gonna do is add about an inch or two of chicken stock to the bottom. I'm gonna season these. All right, and now I just gotta put my turkey on it. Whoa, where do I go? <laughs> I'm out of room. I'm also gonna put a little bit of olive oil in here. Now, ladies and gents, it is time to put the turkey on. Wow, it felt like the Lion King moment for me. I'm gonna season it with salt and pepper pretty generously. Wow, oh my goodness. It's time for the turkey to go inside the oven. I'm gonna put it in the oven for 30 minutes at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is like, what, 220 degrees Celsius. And I'm really hoping that it's gonna crisp it. Then after 30 minutes, I'm gonna bump it down to 325 or 350, depending, and cook it for about 15 minutes per pound. So this is the part we've all been waiting for. Bye-bye. All right, so 5 p.m. Gonna bump that, I just burned my eyebrows off with the heat from that thing. I'm gonna bump the heat down to like 325. Bye. <laughs> well, welcome back. It's time to turn the heat down on this, so it's done uh, kind of crisping the top. I'm gonna take it down all the way to 325. And there it's gonna cook for a long time, but about every 30 minutes, I'm gonna be basting it. Basing doesn't really do a whole lot, but it makes me feel like I'm doing something that's important. So I'll show you what it's looking like right now. So you can already see that it's getting some of those crispy bits on top, and that's what I really want, is that skin to become almost crunchy. And so I'm gonna grab this interesting tool that I don't know fully how to use yet, because it's, it's a little different than normal ones. I'm gonna base over top to keep the moisture going into it, and you can just see the flavor. And one final little thing I do, because I'm a big fan, of things being even, I'm gonna rotate the turkey the other way now. Sweet. Woo! Now, 
I'm gonna get what was probably one of uh, my wife's favorite dishes going. It's gonna be the green bean casserole, but I'm throwing such an interesting twist on this. I'm gonna be making a French onion green bean casserole because if there's something that we love more than green bean casserole, it's French onion soup. So I'm basically making them together. And so, yeah, you start with like two uh, yellow onions. Looks like a lot of onions. And you're right, it is a lot of onions. <laughs> all right, so now I'm gonna get all these onions going. You wanna start with a good dollop of butter and cook that on medium. Add a little pinch of salt to help these caramelize. And then you can turn the heat up or down depending on how it's going for you. And I always have a little dry sherry cooking wine that also helps them caramelize and it helps it keep it from sticking to the bottom. So now I'm gonna prepare the green beans of this dish. And you just use two pounds of green beans. Uh, these aren't from a can or anything. You can use a can. They're, I think they're just as good, but I wanted to make this really homemade. And so yeah, I'm gonna open these, I'm gonna cut them to where they're about the same proportions because I'm gonna blanch them in the boiling water that I have going. And if you don't know what blanch means, it's a fancy way for I'm gonna quickly boil. And you cook them for about three to four minutes. So the onions are starting to caramelize, so I'm gonna keep these going. We took our green beans off and we have our caramelized onions in a pan sitting away. And now we're heating up about two tablespoons of butter. And now we're gonna add in some flour, which is almost like a roux base, and we're gonna mix that together. Yeah, and you wanna cook this for about three and a minutes to get the floury taste off. This is the white sauce that'll be used for the green bean casserole. You wanna start by adding the milk pretty slow, and it's cold milk. And then once you get almost a cup poured in, you can pretty much dump the rest in. So now we gotta check on this turkey and get ready to rotate it again. If you'll notice, we actually made it this little cool top hat, which is to keep the top from burning. Because see how the top is really getting golden brown? We want that to be even throughout. So this, this, uh, this top blocks the heat directly on it and it allows it to cook more evenly. The hat goes back on and the turkey goes back home. Whew. Lord have mercy. So I've added some salt and pepper and I've also added some nutmeg, some ground nutmeg. Uh, and then the last thing I'm gonna add to finish is a little uh, thyme. And you can uh, use dry thyme or wet thyme, whatever you wanna use, or fresh, I mean. I'm using some stuff that I have. So I think that's the best thing you can use is what you have. <laughs> this is my sous chef, my beautiful wife, Tori. So glad I got her name right. <laughs> this is the moment we've been waiting for, for the green bean casserole. I'm, I've, I've made everything, so now we just need to build, it's like almost like a green bean lasagna. If you're Italian, you're probably hating me right now. Who cares? So the first thing we're gonna do in a casserole dish is we're gonna take half of those caramelized onions and we're gonna spread them out in the bottom of this dish. Oh my goodness gracious. Wow. It's hard not to be excited about this. Mm -mm -mm. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to dump all of our green beans that were just lightly blanched. They weren't fully cooked because they about to get cooked up in this oven. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Now you want to salt and pepper these because nobody likes just unseasoned vegetables. Vegetables! Nobody likes that. Get that out of here. Salt. Wow. Who would have who who thought it? Get it? Salt. Salt. Who would have thought it? Whatever, who cares? Now this is the exciting part, wait. Pause, I'm gonna put on the cheese first. Checking my resources. Next up, we're gonna take that beautiful white sauce that we made. Wow, this is basically like creamy mushroom soup. That's what this basically is. Wow. And you say there's no God. Now you wanna mix that around and make sure it's, everyone's getting to know each other because we're all friends in this household. Mm-mm-mm, wow. The next is beautiful. So we're gonna take some Gruyere cheese. We're gonna take half of the amount that I have. We're just gonna spread it out. Oh my goodness gracious. Would you look at that? Look at this, look at that, look at this, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of the most classic things that people love from, from French onion, oh not French onion soup, from green bean casserole. We're gonna, we're gonna put these fried crispy onions on top. 
the last thing we're gonna do is now we're gonna grate some of that Gruyere cheese over top. That's gonna give it that French onion, uh, broiled melted cheese feel that I want. Y'all ready for this? Dun, 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 dun. Wow. <laughs> I'm skipping the gym for a year now. Oh my goodness gracious. Anyways, this looks fantastic. And I'm just gonna simply put it in the oven at 375 for like 30 minutes. However, my wife and I only have one oven. So I'm gonna stick it in the oven underneath the turkey at 325 for probably 45 minutes. And like, let's see what happens. Wow, wow. Make room, Mr. Turkey. We have a new neighbor. And that's that. See you in a little bit. Folks, we made a boo-boo. We forgot the other half of the onions. In my excitement, I messed up. And I owe you an apology. Ooh. Those are pretty good, not gonna lie. So we're trying to find a way to get these onions underneath all this goodness. It's not gonna look as beautiful anymore. Babe, wanna come help me? Mm -hmm. Basically, you just grab a spoonful of onions. I'm gonna open it up a little bit, and then you just put some onions there. Okay, so it doesn't look as good as it did, but I still think it looks good, right? That looks very yummy, by this. Are you hold that for me? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna throw this back in there. Cooking with Tori. I wanna make sure it wasn't hot. All right, now you really have any roommate. Make friends, be nice to your brother. Oh, man, I can't believe that happened. Oh, no. Okay, no. Oh, no. I got dirt on my freaking thing. All right, we're back. We're making mashed potatoes. This is very exciting because this is my second favorite meal, part of Thanksgiving meal, and it's super easy to make. I am going to use mashed potatoes, salt, I'm sorry, I'm using potatoes, salt, butter, and a little milk. That's it. So it's very chad proof, which means I can make it without spilling everything everywhere all the time. So what you want to start with is about four rus russet potatoes. Uh, if you use red potatoes, they're a little waxy, they won't match right. And uh, I tend to do skin off because not everybody likes that. But and you want to try to find them all around the same size because you want your potatoes to cook evenly. You don't want some to be incredibly mashed and some to be kind of uh, still, still uncooked. So yeah, so now I'm gonna start peeling them. I'm not gonna wash them before I peel them because what's the point in washing them twice? So now that they're peeled, I, uh, I'm gonna chop them up evenly, but be careful when you chop. You don't wanna start here. You wanna start, start, the, start cutting them in half. Cut each one in half. So half, 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 and this is called quartering. This means that they'll all stay around the same size and that's what you want to cook evenly. So then I just put them in their little in their little jacuzzi. The reason why you rinse them is you can actually see the water get cloudy. What that cloudiness is, is actually starch, which is what you wanna wash off. We're getting that off and then they're gonna go swimming in a different pool. They're like at a, they're at a spa right now. They're going, ooh. <laughs> they're going from the cold tub to the hot tub. And can I get a hot tub? Come on, my friends. So I'm gonna turn this heat as hot as it can possibly go. I'm gonna take my little hot tub friends and put them in the bath. Man, look at them. Just having a little spa time. I could use some spa time. Couldn't you? <laughs> yeah. And that's it, now I'm gonna boil them. Oh, oh, you can't forget one of the most important parts, salt. Start start seasoning your potatoes now, and it looks like there's a lot, but listen, the water's gonna keep most of that. So heavily salt your water, and that will start the seasoning for your potatoes, because I don't know if you've ever eaten a potato that's plain, but there's no flavor. It just tastes like, tastes like that. We'll see you in a few, folks. So we're gonna go ahead and check this turkey. <laughs> Ooh, it's hot. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, look at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the temperature into the deepest part 
of the chicken breast or the turkey breast and it is I don't want to touch the bone I want to be a little off the bone it actually it's right where it needs to be it needs to be right at 170 to be cooked fully and you know you can actually pull it out sometimes at 165 because it'll continue to rise in temperature so I think I'm actually right there I'm gonna leave it out I'm gonna move it to a cutting board I'm gonna put aluminum foil on top and let it rest that's one of the biggest things that I've read about cooking a turkey is you want to let it rest for at least oh, almost half the time that you cooked it for. So if you cooked it for three hours, let it rest for an hour and a half. We're not going to do that. No one does that, but that allows the meat to relax, not the flavors to, to stabilize instead of just running out whenever you cut it. Yeah. Look at that. It's perfect. I don't know if you've seen this, but look, whenever you cook it, cook to safe men internal temp of 165. <laughs> Well, what? Look, look what the cat drug in. So I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna jack this heat up. Woo! Get up to 375. Guess what? Your brother moved out, and now you're living a high life. So now we're gonna move it so it's just not sitting in to pull those juices. I'm gonna use those juices to actually make a gravy. Look at all that. You may be thinking that's gross, but trust me, that is liquid gold right there, my friends. I'm gonna move it over here. I'm gonna cover it with tin foil and let it rest. It literally needs to chill. Don't we all? I think that could be a great lesson for, let's all just chill for a sec. All right, so now that the turkey's out and the grimy casserole's out, the mashed potatoes are boiling right now, or the potatoes are, we're gonna start making the gravy. And this is like what brings it all home. And if you're worried about your turkey being cold, this is a way to, uh, redeem that by making steaming piping hot gravy. So what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use all the fixing from the bottom of my pan that we made earlier. I'm gonna start pulling them out. I'm gonna strain these. And you want the juice from it, but you don't want all this extra stuff. All the flavor is in the juice because it's been cooking for so long. And away we go. So, what, what you don't really see right now is that there's a lot of wonderful juice underneath, uh, oh wow, underneath, under this right now. There's also a layer of fat. And so you can invest into this wonderful thing called a fat separator. Don't we wish we all could have one of those? Anyways, so as I pour this turkey juice, for lack of better terms, you'll watch the, the fat separate from the turkey juice. What makes this thing awesome is Whenever you pour it out, you're just pulling the juice and you can stop when the fat comes there and then you can dispose of that. So I'm gonna be straining all that fat out and I'm gonna be pouring all the good stuff into this very, very large uh, makeshift saucepan. I'm pouring the fat back into that bowl and I rinse and repeat, I do it again. All right, so now I put a little bit of butter and a little bit of those leftover onions from the turkey thing. I'm gonna add about a, a quarter of a cup of flour and I'm gonna start making a roux. I'm gonna cook this for about five minutes and then I'm gonna add in the rest of that, that good sauce right there. I believe that my potatoes are done. And I'll show you how I know. I'm gonna grab one of these. Remember, they're all the same size, so I, I, there's no tricks here. You take a knife and if it goes in without any pressure, look at that, no pressure. I just, I just gently slid that in there. Look at that. And that means that they are done. So I'm gonna start taking them out and put them into this really oversized pot because I'm running out of other pots. I'm gonna get ready to, rate to finish my mashed potatoes. You put in one thick dollop of butter. And now you use that really great masher that's super old school. It's something that you'd see like people cook with in the 80s and stuff, but here we go. And you just start mashing. <laughs> Hence the name, mashed potatoes. Now that this is really starting to cook, and I, I'm burning it a little bit because I was a little busy. But that stuff will come back off. I'm gonna go and start adding the other juices with through a ladle. I hope this works. So this is the type of consistency I go for. Sometimes a little bit thicker, but you can really tell the thickness by if it runs off the back of the spoon. And you can see that it's not running off. And so that's perfect. And it's piping hot, so it'll warm up anything that's cooled off. But I think we've timed everything to be great. I know what you're thinking, Chad. These look a little burnt. Well, guess what? Joke's on you. They're not. <laughs> I, the, the, the thing is, is we've made it this far. We've made it this far. And 
I don't know how to take it out. And so I'm like, I don't want to ruin it by taking the knife and like edging a, a long, wait, see the whole thing move? Yeah. Is this going to happen when I think it's going to happen? I'm not spanking your butt right now, but I'm thinking about it. I sure as heck am thinking. Look at that! There it is. Wow! You want to try one? Yeah. Okay. She's going the knife technique. Oh, you're going for the easy one. She looked at this one, I watched her, and uh -huh. she was like, this one looks easier. This one does look easier. Be careful. Voila! Okay. Anissa. You're up. You're up. No. You're up. You're up. You yep. Do you get to do on. yours. <laughs> yes. Welcome to our channel. Okay, ready? <laughs> Honestly, you could probably okay, just like flip it. It'd be a little, a little nice. <laughs> We did give her the hardest one. We, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I had to give mine a good little slap on the on the on the on bottom the of it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Woo. All right, now now put them all close to each other. So, so Anita, will you hold that little um, that thing? Uh, no, 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 the the little grate thing. This. Yes. This. Sorry, I'm trying to watch this at the same time. <laughs> Okay, now Tori is gonna pour some of that. Wait, why is this thing turning? Oh, oh, I see. I can go up or down. That's what she said. So, babe, so you're gonna pour some of that that sh that powdered sugar. You can pour it in there. Yep, pour it in there. Yep, and now she can. Aside somewhere. We can't eat them. Well, I mean, you, we can, but we got to finish everything else. Okay. So the first thing we have is our French onion green bean casserole, which is going to change lives. I just know it. The next thing that we have is our whipped mashed potatoes. Um, four ingredients. It'll it'll last forever in your heart. Next is our turkey, which. It's gonna have a little bit of a citrus and herby flavor along with like a deep, sweet, golden taste because I, I was basing some honey without y'all knowing. And then we have our gravy that was made with all the juices from this turkey, which is gonna be awesome. And then lastly, but not leastly, we have a chocolate and walnut pumpkin bread with powdered sugar over top. And your boy's not even a baker, but I'm coming for the people, baby. So, and he is, needs to say, I feel very proud of this episode of Cooking with Chad. This was a challenge. This was actually like a, a real challenge. And we're not gonna make the same mistake that we made last time on Cooking with Chad, where we didn't show you the reaction, which you all, I mean, listen, you boys cooking. It's gonna be good. Anyways, we're actually gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, carve this turkey, and we're gonna make plates, and we're gonna taste it live for y'all, but this is it. I feel like I'm at Disney. Do you ever get the turkey legs at Disney? I just walk around with a big old turkey leg in my mouth. Super normal. Crazy. I didn't marry you because you're normal, babe. Mm -hmm. She just grabbed the middle one. That's what looks the best. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, you got enough? There's no way I'm gonna eat all this. <laughs> okay. Here we go. This is it. All right, so what would, what would y'all like to try first? The green bean casserole. Let's try the green bean casserole. Remember the French onion green bean casserole. Mm -hmm. The crunchies look so good. You can really get those onions a lot. Oh, yum. Yeah. Hey, those are good. Yeah. It's nice because it has that stringy cheesiness. Like a French onion soup. 
Good job. Do you like it? No, I do. You're not just saying it? No, I really like it. How do you feel? I eat it. <laughs> She's like, oh, here you do. I need a whole bowl of this stuff. When you get the top and it's crunchy, it's really good. The top is my, yeah. Bowl. It's a big bite. I don't want to pour it anyway. Alright. Oh. She doesn't like to try them alone. I like to try them alone. She doesn't like to try them alone either. I think they're good. I think they could have been a little warm, warmer. I think they were sitting for a little while. Do you do like it? She's <laughs> whispering. They do have really good flavor. Genuinely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now with the mashed okay. potatoes and the turkey. Ooh, y'all. This turkey is like falling apart. It's so good. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing. I just had it with the mashed potatoes and the turkey and the gravy. Mm. Mm. This turkey is like the best one that I've ever tried in my life. Seriously? Yeah, I'm just saying. How, many, how many have you had? <laughs> Three. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Dude, turkeys are from North America, so. It's so tender. Here, here from further so. mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. This is like it's my favorite one. And you can see if you pull back like in the bread, you can still see the seasoned. Um, yeah. I haven't even tried the little top of it, babe, but it's just like the inside of it's so good. Yeah. Wow. I'm very impressed, honestly. It's a masterpiece. Y'all are nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, I love it. Happy yeah, and if we could have made like dressing and had rolls, we just didn't have time. Mm. We just ran out of time. Babe. She's trying to make a baby. Anthony came over with a super new baby and I'm like, mm, crap. Mm -hmm. It's time. Love time. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh. Frick yeah. Oh my god. Wow. Wow. Why are you not on camera right now? Because all of you need to see her reaction. Her face is so red and like, I feel like she's blushing by how good it is. But you're surprised. And I don't take that as a dish. Look at that. Look how marbled this chocolate is. Wow. I don't know if they can see this. Look how marbled. It's so good. Anyways. You should see how marbled this chocolate. Look at this. Look how perfectly. Mm -hmm. See the little things. Babe, yeah. I'm very impressed by you. Oh my gosh, that shook my life right there. I was, I didn't know what to expect. Yeah, mm. <laughs> you're saying. Come back on the turkey. I'm so shook by every bite of turkey I take. Man, it's the light meat. Every bite of turkey. turkey. Every turkey and gravy. Y'all, it's Thanksgiving Day. When y'all are seeing it. <laughs> it really is so good, I'm not playing. Oh, wow. I hope your Thanksgiving feast is as good as this. Yeah, if not, you should come and hang sometime. Yeah, let's hang out. Thanks for liking and subscribing. We'll catch you later. We love you. We <laughs> hope you have an daddy? amazing Thanksgiving with your family. And we'll see you in the next video. <laughs>